Ladies and germans, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich coming to you with another game of Steel Division Normandy 44. Uh, this particular one right here goes on between two duos of Axis players. This was a recent um, tournament that had happened. We're going to see, actually, the game though going on between a, lo a local festival and a Juco Dim. That's over here on the eastern side. As you're looking over here at the screen right now. Uh, against You Shall Suffer and UK Harold Alexander. Uh, both players getting just finishing their setup right now. Take a quick look at the units uh, being used. So both of them are going to be using the 91st Luftlander, uh, which is, if my understanding is correct, kind of more of a parachute kind of regiment. Um, but I'm still learning this, so bear with me a little bit. And Zhuko Dim is playing the 12th SS Panzer Division. Well, Harold Alexander is playing the 21st Panzer Division. So this is the kind of Rommel unit that survived the North Africa campaign to be destroyed and whooped over as the game, excuse me, as the war went forward in 44 and 45. Uh, Harold Alexander favoring a very, very heavy opening. You can see lots, well, lots and lots of light material, though. We see a lot of scout cars coming on in, as well as one mortar half-track being backed up by a couple of uh, converted French tanks. And with very, very little as a linchpin between the two, we're going to see a big, big push. I think he's trying to push to take this particular area right in here. It's got some decent sight lines to control roads, given the right position. Uh, as for his ally over here, you shall suffer. You shall suffer going for a uh, fairly infantry-centric build as well. Not actually going with the same kind of... Vehicle support, though. Opel Blitz is really what he's going for, as well as Kubelwagens to make his get his troops into battle in the first place. And I'm wondering if he's trying to figure out a way to get to these two blocks of buildings. Now, for their own push, we will say, uh, was this local festival? No, this is Juko Dim with the 12th SS. A big infantry shove. These guys are flying on in as quickly as possible. A pack 38 in kind of lousy position, unfortunately. But infantry get pushing up on this map. This is point to Hawk, by the way. You can tell because... Well, you can't tell, apparently. Oh, okay, you can tell because of the cliffs back there. Uh, so, the red team, the Axis 2, are basically coming from where the Americans landed. And the blue team defending from a similar perspective. A lot of infantry getting into these houses very, very quickly, trying to lock these things down. On the eastern side of the map, oof, already... We're going to see that a pack 36 has been blown apart by this big, big light vehicle push coming from Harold Alexander. Okay, a TOT barrage coming in. I don't entirely know how this is coming on through, so I'm sure somebody out there either tell me or tell me what the heck I'm doing wrong, because I'm not 100% sure on this one. Very, very interesting. I'll check back on that in just about 20 seconds. Meanwhile, to the east, we will see the 12th um, excuse me, 21st Panzer Division, 12th is his opponent inside of uh, his alley over here to the west. But the 21st Panzer Division is already knifing on through, pushing back against this, 20, this pack 40s over here in the east. And a TOT barrage coming in, not doing anywhere near enough as I thought it would. Putting, pinning down these Panzer Grenadiers and putting some pressure on the 222. But all things considered, rather... Rather underwhelming, if I can say so myself. Uh, the 91st Luftlander, though, starts off with a ton of elite air troops. And you can see it right here, these Jaegers coming on in. They have anti-tank, they have anti-infantry. You'll just see a big, big fight between Flammenwerfers and LMGs. Watch Hugo Dim getting crushed, I imagine. Quick firefight going to happen between these guys, though. And you know the Germans are just in the house next door, so you can't trust those neighbors of yours. ISG, in the meantime, going to get come under pressure from the 222 of the West. And somehow managing to put enough pressure into him, they might be able to stress him out. Okay, so pinned down, but I think he's going to get pinned down himself. And the Jaegers getting completely and totally wiped off the map. We watch the East, though, we will see that Zhuko Dim is carving a bloody path between the two Red Axis players. And even with 30, uh, 35 Fs coming in from Harold Alexander, it's really a question of what this Pack 40 over here can do. As a, ooh, a Panzer 39 coming in. 
And I've said this in another vi uh, video, but remember guys, for the German troops, uh, early on in the war, they didn't quite have the wherewithal to create huge, huge armor divisions, so they very often utilized captured material from their opponents. In this particular case, if you saw an F, that meant that the tank was converted from a French chassis. If you saw a T, it was from the Czech Republic, so on and so forth. I don't know if they converted the Russian ones very often, uh, because by the time that was coming out, they had their own material more or less up and running. You can also tell that 39F because of that... There we go. Yes. Um... Okay, can't see this, uh, this sled, unfortunately. We can see his line of sight for this guy, and you can see he's not very good at the moment. And that's one of the cool things you really have to understand about this game, that this game is heavily dependent on line of sight. Uh, so Harold Alexander, for example, see what he sees over here at the western side. He does see that he's got a lot of his opponent's material pinned down or pushed back rather severely. Although he is still taking some fair losses over here at the eastern side, his ally getting hit by anti-tank positions, his own light troops are going to get pushed back by combined fire pack 36s and 39 Fs if they're not careful. You can see more 222s flopping down here. This 223 that's not long for this world either, I imagine. Again, meanwhile, on the center part of the map, uh, the lack of infantry from the German players is proving to be quite a liability. These Jaegers are trying to get forward and running into these Juko Deems uh, Panzer Grenadiers. And on the red German right, he seems to be shoving forward just barely himself. So, exactly 50-50 between the two. Good usage, though, of mortar half-tracks putting fire down on suspected anti-tank positions. This guy actually almost out of ammunition already. So, very, very aggressive playstyles on both sides. I kind of like that about this game, too. Um... One-on-ones occasionally fall into kind of this very, very low-key stalemate as neither player really wants to push. Where this game kind of really shines is between the multiple commands. Each, first of all, having to work together, and second of all, um, really getting some good opportunities to showcase what each of these divisions can and can't do. This Panzer III coming over here to the, uh, knifing, I guess, back up towards the cliffs? No, knifing off towards the northern side of the map. You're going to see his sight lines are going to get better and better. He's going to throw a round down range. Going after this 222, Harold Alexander's troops do have control. Significant portion. And are pushing this guy back desperately. Dear God, local festival is getting shredded. And the 91st Luftlander on his side is not doing too hot. But maybe, maybe this Panzer III can turn it around. After all, though, it still does have a light vehicle. Was it Kampfwagen Kanona, I think it is? Or a Pack 38 really mounted onto this chassis. There's not a lot of considerable anti tank in the area. That being said, we are going to see a huge, huge shove of trucks from the local festival trying to stabilize his position, his infantry getting shredded. And really, if you're looking at it from the super, super macro level, if Harold Alexander can get all the way up here to take out these. Um, this area right here says land or air, that means that your opponent's not going to be able to reinforce and send in troops from that particular uh, sector, making it even easier for you to control a given position. But the Panzer III has claimed his first victim, a mortar half-track going down over there on the western side. Me oh, actually, excuse me, to the northern side, I forgot. This little arrow right here uh, dictating those positions. Meanwhile, on the southern side of the map, whether the right side as we're looking right here, we are going to see the 91st Luftlande uh, from Axis 2, i.e. You Shall Suffer, is able to take this rather significant portion of the map. This is a town right here, and this controls several different roads, given the appropriate reinforcement. And you can see right now that You Shall Suffer is trying to consolidate his position, moving up in mortar, as well as a couple of decently heavy tanks in Phase A here. Still not anywhere close to Phase B. We've got another two minutes before that happens. And although there's a big show from local festival and Juko Deem trying to connect their forces in the center, uh, it does seem that You Shall Suffer is trying to rush reinforcements into the area. And with that, uh, the red team has taken 51% of the map. They seems to be stabilizing their position a little bit, sitting in defensive spots here. And this 35F could 
really what the heck happened to him? He was just he was just there. Where did he go? Oh, okay, he's, he's being called in. Thought I saw a tank right there, and I thought to myself, perfect, he can charge on in. There's very little in the way as anti-tank. Yes, there's a Panzer up there, back here, and these guys do have Shreks. And of course, there's this Pack 36. But initially, these positions right here could all be overrun by this light 30, uh, 35? 30, yes, 35 S F. So the Fanzusius tank could be a very, very important piece as we're shifting ahead in this map. I look over here on the blue right, the local festival facing off against Harold Alexander. Uh, first of all, guys, Harold Alexander, historical general, he served for quite a bit of time in first, first, excuse me, the First World War as well as the Second. Ironically, I believe he is fighting as one of the units he faced in North Africa. And you can see right now that he's um, pretty much crushing his opponent, local festival, not able to stand up to the heavy firepower given to the 21st Panzer in Phase A. Of course, all this aggression is coming at a cost. You do see that this cannons on these scout cars are completely and totally out of ammunition. And indeed, even the infantry running out of ammunition, the MG-34s. So, um, Opal Blitz is coming in, though, to kind of support that and resume the push and help them out. But what I would like to see... Excuse me. As a drive down this arterial right here, not only to capture this area, but also to kind of cut off this big pocket. This could be a massive, massive opportunity for the Red Axis to really wipe out a, a lot of material from their opponents. Now, over here on the blue left, we will see, though, that uh, Juko Deem seems to have things well under control. Uh, the 12th SS Panzer does have, if I remember correctly, a decent, a decent early game. They start to get um, ramp up a little bit more in Phase B. And you can see that now with the Panzerwerfer coming on in, so this thing could be quite good with the Nebelwerfer's uh, 1 und 40. Local, local Festival, in the meantime, calling in one of the only kind of big heavy tank threats that he's got, a Martyr II. Now, the Martyr II is, if memory serves, yep, it's that open anti-tank platform, an assault gun of near, not legendary capability, but pretty darn good nevertheless. And dear God, you see that this knife, look on the mini-map right now, you see this knife in the middle of the Red Axis position that's quite, quite incredible. And seeing the opportunities being missed, I would say, again, by Harold Alexander, he should be shoving over here to the west, cutting in and behind. Does he actually know what's there, though? He's got to know there's something. He's got to know. You shall suffer similarly uh, aware of what's going on, but not perfectly so. As you go deem, Hedrick and Adidas have surrendered. Okay, I, are we actually seeing the push? Okay, we're seeing a bit of a push. Not perfect, mind you, but a bit of a push. Double but first, I'd like to see these guys uh, light up the German position. Well, the his his um, opponent's German position. But as we're seeing right now, the lack of infantry on the blue left is starting to become a liability as these machine guns and even this ISG can kind of shift forward without too much of a problem. In the center, of course, this Pack 36 is still able to hold down the line, and these Panzer up as well as. Pigrens are able to take out the light vehicles that are coming against them. But although the center is great for the blue axis, they're getting shredded pretty much everywhere else. Now, where's that Nebelwerfer? Is that a Flammenwerfer half track? Excuse me, Flampanzer. Not really a Flampanzer, though. That's more of a, whatever. Not important. Okay, but the Nebelwerfers are going to be lighting up here. He's reloading right now. I'm trying to figure out... Okay, he threw down a nice little barrage over here. I did clear out some of this position. But not enough to make really freak out. Um, you shall suffer, really, at all. The Martyr 2 is coming up this arterial. Going to push back quite a bit of this territory. But these Spa troops should be able to spot this out pretty darn quickly. And now, Harold Alexander calling in his own essential Nebelwerfe. No, but this is more of a... was it? Stuka Sefus, I would guess. No, this is true, a true Nebelwerfe, isn't it? Hmm. 
The Germans did eventually start to utilize the idea of rocket artillery uh, much more consistently after running into it on the Eastern Front, mounting rocket launching racks to their early half tracks. But even at that point, it seemed it was a little bit too late for them to use it effectively. Oh my gosh, this guy's got picked off by him? No, it couldn't have been. There's 222 coming over, completely roasting and toasting that, that Martyr 2. That was a, a, totally a shock for me. Wow, that was super, super fast. And with that, the, with the Martyr 2 going down, that's a major, major threat falling apart here. You shall suffer calling in some strokes over here to the west, even as Ruko Dim calls in a heavier P4 to kind of support his ailing forces. Well, I am surprised that neither player has really, well, neither team has really called in any aircraft just yet. Instead, preferring just to kind of sit over here and really throw themselves in bloody kind of frontal attacks. These Panzer Abwehrs are getting pushed back a little bit. Nope, never mind. Never mind. Again, not without their own teeth. Half track trying to desperately to suppress this pack 36 before it gets taken out. Another shot might do it though. Yep, there it goes. It's unfortunate, unfortunate death. But on the blue right, um, surrenders are happening fast and furious. And although people are bailing out now and again, there's a lot of vision here, I would argue by the various scout groups. So Harold Alexander has to be seeing this is part of the front line. Okay, he has good he has got some good sight lines, but maybe not perfect. He sees what he needs to see, let's put it that way. Uh, but both teams not seeing the great amount of indirect fire that exists for their opponents. And indeed you are going to see a lot of indirect fire coming on out. Wow, from this... What? Ooh, this is a pretty beastly set of artillery on both sides. Depends on for lighting things up. They're taking out a couple of squads and allowing this push from this half-track. There's another game I cast recently where um, artillery is utilized, but not effectively. As one side would go and use airstrikes and, like, and kind of similar avenues to pin down and push back infantry, the other side would throw an artillery barrage or two and they just not move forward. And that was a little bit of a shock to me. And this one we're seeing a vastly different experience. We're seeing the blue troops shoving in the second after inevitable, excuse me, inevitable for barrage comes down. And that's pretty darn good. Ah, so this one the TOT barrage is coming on out. So from the Schirmenwagen right here with the radio, he's calling in a barrage right in this area, and I don't think that You Shall Suffer sees that. No, he doesn't. So when that comes out, it's going to be pretty darn surprising to him. P4 might get, excuse me, Stug might get taken out. Um, and indeed, probably these Grenadiers as well. They're pretty unlucky for him in either way. Question is, will these p grands be able to throw down a Panzer effort to take out this punk? They don't quite see him yet, do they? No, they don't quite see him just yet. Fascinating. Alright, though. Back to the east. We're going to see Phase C in two and a half minutes. Check in on the center part of the map. Still, still, this is a bastion for the Blue Axis team. Even though Axis, the Reds do control 51%, the Blue Axis have this knife in the middle separating the two groups of um, the Red Axis team. And more TOT barrages just keep coming on in. Jaeger's coming in close enough. Are they going to get a shot on this Panzer? Flampanzer? Oof, pinned down immediately. So maybe not. Maybe not. But the Strug is going to do put some good fire into their opponent. This Panzer Grenadier might get shut back this P4 any second, though. Shots are coming out in other directions, stressing both tanks out. And a Stur is coming on. A Stur, Zweigen, Fietzig. Trying to creep his way out of that TOT barrage before it's too late. And good lord, that TOT barrage is freaking him out like crazy. Both these guys falling back and giving up a significant portion of that field. 
So really, it's Harold Alexander kind of keeping things, really pushing forward for the Red Axis. His usage of indirect fire, first of all, taking out and suppressing initial positions has just been very, very well done. And the 91st Luftlande Division has not been able to create any kind of gun line to suppress and push back this aggressive, aggressive attack. Let's take a look at the minimap if you want to. So, um, as more heavy tanks and more infantry gets thrown into the center to close this gap, we are going to see the blues push back and probably take easily 50% on the left, room side, left side. Uh, but as they move forward, I don't think they're really consolidating the position between the two red players. And that's definitely causing quite an issue, I would, I would argue. Why do I mean, Why do I say that? Well, controlling the center position between the two keeps, obviously, your opponents separated. And while they can concentrate on both sides, this allows you to wrap in and around your opponents. Now, this poor, poor um, howitzer is going to get roasted pretty darn quick. He's going to get another couple shots off before the next TOT barrage comes in. That's going to happen every now and again. But how are we really going to do this? Let's go check this out again. So as this Halberstam gets taken out, what's the last couple of things he ends up doing? We'll see in a moment, won't we? It does seem that local, like Juko Deem, excuse me, Juko Deem has been able to finally figure out how to string together a fairly effective attack. Unfortunately for him, whoa, the A, the A, okay, the HE rounds, okay, the AP rounds are still. Extent the HE rounds are not though. Uh, unfortunately for him though, uh, his opponent has still not even begun to fight. A couple of Martyr twos coming on, and which means that these tanks that come out for Juko Dim are going to be under some very very heavy fire. Panther D coming on in, and of course that thing is quite terrifying. Um, if deployed in the right forces, but you can see right now he's at terrible line of sight. He can't see Jack. And it doesn't seem like Shuko Dima is going to be trying to push him up to any kind of position like here. Um, kind of just, again, knife between the two forces, using the arterials to get behind his opponent's position. Meanwhile, um, while we're seeing some death over here for Harold Alexander, let's take a quick look at what he sees. He knows that he's in a, he's in a great spot right here. He knows that these hedgerows are pretty much clear. Um, it does not seem like he does know about... It's a good idea right here, but, you know, bits and pieces at a time, folks. Hands are going to do us in the center part of the field, uh, just exchanging LMG fire, but that's going to be running out of ammunition from a lot of them. Indeed, one squad's already out of it, another squad's going to run out pretty darn soon. This last squad is only barely hanging on with a little bit of K98 ammo before he gets completely and totally Winchester on ammo there. That's kind of surprising. Now these um, scouts right here are going to get taken out pretty darn quickly, I would think. But that's okay. They're dying, so, the, so this massive push can come on. And dear lord, look at that. First of all, rocket launcher. Close in kind of anti-tank and machine guns. Let's see. We're going to see rockets coming on in. Yes, we are. He's using them to blow a hole. Concentration of firepower is going to just devastate these pioneers and these Panzer Grenadiers right in the middle of this position. And even while you shall suffer is suffering under his own engagement, <laughs> local festival is not having the party he thought he would. All of his troops are falling back. He's got a couple of gun emplacements that are still extant. This Pack 38 really the only linchpin he's got left, as well as perhaps the Flak 36 here. But even then, this thing's got terrible, terrible line of sight. You see Pioneers going down, Grenadiers going down. And while this guy is lighting up and trying to create a curtain of fire between him and his opponent, it's not quite going to be enough, I don't think. Things looking more positive for Jugo Deem in the west, or the blue left if you prefer, as uh, 
you shall suffer is forced to fall back into these hedgerows. Nebel, excuse me, Nebel Verfer barrages coming out like crazy. Might be able to take out some of these Pants Uh Perhaps even pushing back these Martyrs, but not quite enough. And it's really just one of those kind of echelon attacks where each team's left is succeeding admirably. While the center is a little bit... Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit unknown to actually really winning. There's a couple of opportunities here for these Pioneers to get pinned down and retaken, even rather, excuse me, force them to surrender. But they're falling back now, which means it's going to be rather difficult for them to do so. Flompets moving forward, trying to bring his most fiery arguments to bear. Not happening, though. Ah, on the boom bar, the grumbling bear is being brought in by Harold Alexander, even as the stroke three comes in from You Shall Suffer. The Stru, as well as another Flompens. So, Shuko so Deem, depending heavily on half tracks to really push his goal over here, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Martyr's doing some really, really great damage, even with their HE rounds. And while squad for squad does seem to be taken out, again, we see pockets forming and getting picked off. As a flame hat, there goes a flame hat, so it goes down, which means that's a big, big loss right there. And this Butte Sherman doesn't have quite the sight lines I thought he did. If he can curve in and around, he might be able to push back this infantry. Won't be easy, mind you, but he might be able to do so. Rockets, though, on the red left of the map, our current, right. Again, continue to pin down a crazy amount of their blue counterparts. And while this Pack 38 is still able to fire, large swaths of this force are now completely gone. And I do kind of like that this game allows the battlefield to evolve somewhat. You can see right here, for example, this former forest is now completely gone, opening up sight lines. I love how detailed this thing is, too. The shooter here has been wounded by spalling, so micro um, fragments of metal have just shredded the poor gunner. I'm gonna focus over here to the right side, I think, to have Harold Alexander kind of continue to push forwards. Now, do his guys have the rockets back under control? His mortar half-track not is kind of ready to fire. Not 100% yet. I didn't realize, actually, his tanks got taken out in this big big swing happening here. The Butte Sherman getting taken out by this marauding Panzer up there. Uh, and... Wow. And you shall suffer suffering greatly under the effects of a Panzer IV Yog Panzer and more Panzer River Barrages. For some reason, the Panzer River Barrage just shredding this area here. Is again trying to open up a lot of this territory for more sight lines? I don't know. That's one way to remove a hedgerow. Not a great one, mind you, but still one nevertheless. We have it coming on in, so Junker 88 coming in. This could be a big, big gun run. He's going to take a lot of un uh, unfriendly fire, but if he can take out this flock position... No, doesn't quite manage to. The Stuhl is coming under fire. He's throwing off a couple of rounds here and there. And after controlling such a great part of the map for so long, the Red Axis team is now the ones giving away tickets across the map. Currently 128 to 1069, though, it's going to be very difficult for me to see how the Blues can effectively push their, their cause, at least without tabling their opponents. Plot pants are coming on forward, and I think You Shall Suffer is definitely definitely without any sort of recourse at the current time. He's managing to kind of stabilize just barely. Uh, his pioneers are rushing on in to trying to take out his pack 50. Excuse me, pack 38 50mm. does manage to do so. And he's shooting up a couple of trucks here and there, but it's not going to be enough. Indeed, the second he gets stressed, he's going to surrender, and that's going to be a decent loss by itself. ME109 coming on in with uh, a ground attack. Doing pretty darn well. 
And it seems you, uh, Harold Alexander over here to the red left has run out of steam completely. He's got very little left. He's not being able to call in any heavy tanks. He's got very, very little. So I had thought that the red team had this ball in the bag, but no. No, finally we are seeing... Is that a Neville? Verbovind. I was going to say Nebelfind. Verbovind with a, a quad flak vetting Oct one Dreidzig. Uh, but that's mostly anti-aircraft. I'm not sure he'd really want to bring that up close to uh, the front line. Not very well armored, as you can see here. But the blue axis, I think, have things wrapping up. Wow, I'm surprised. I'm very, very surprised. Hinkle coming in, doing uh, a nice little gun run, taking the Jagdpanzer, and might be able to take out this Panzer IV if this Rebel Fin doesn't take him out, or if this ME109s... Wow, three ME109s, this guy's not making it out. Yep, there he goes, he's dying as we speak. In the meantime, over here, 222 going to get taken out pretty darn quickly, I think, by... Yep, there it goes, he surrenders. Um, these scouts at the same time are going to get picked off. This Panzer up there is going to do pretty darn well. And now we're going to see the Axis number 1 has managed to stabilize this. Now they're even going to win in 15 minutes if the rest of this game continues the way that it is already. It seems, though, that uh, You Shall Suffer is not yet giving in. Harold Alexander has not called in anything a whole lot recently, but uh, You Shall Suffer not giving in just yet. Calling a couple more bits of infantry. As now the Hinkle comes in himself and putting cannon fire into this broom bar. Now, how. 75mm, yeah, jeez, this would be crazy, crazy cannon fire. And yeah, I think Harold Alexander has just kind of given up mentally. You can see right here, controlling 62% of the map. If they get just like 3 more percent, they could really, really sock it to the red axis. But I don't know if that's even going to be necessary. Indeed, these 109s are doing some good work, and here comes the Hinkle yet again. Putting more fire into the broom bar. Not able to take it out, but with the P4 dying over here and surrendering, and the Panzer Grenadier is trying to get close enough to take out this Flampanzer, it's not going to happen either. So yes, here we go, so 63, 64, 65? Yeah, this entire pocket's getting closed down, so plus three now. Incredible, incredible turnaround. The blue, the blue axe is really, really doing well here. Sticking it out and really allowing these pockets to be picked up should that become necessary. But nope. Harold Alexander says, screw this, bro. I am out. He's got nothing left in terms of actual material. And I imagine his, his ally will tap out with no more assistance. 68% of the map controlled. Wow, 75%. If that gets picked up, that's going to be insane. I have never seen that actually happen. So, it has a minor victory, but any single time you get your opponent to surrender with that kind of... <laughs> that kind of losses inflicted, wow. Let's take a look at the most deadly pieces. Um, we are going to see the Luftlander. 30, pack 36 doing some good work against UK Alexander. Yeah, actually a lot of this damage is being done just by anti-tank guns, really, really sealing the deal. But let's not forget the damage done by some of the aircraft. I didn't see a single, air, I th well, that's not true. I saw like one or two aircraft being called in by the red team, but the blue team just owned the skies between ME109s making runs and the Henkels and even the, the uh, Junker 87s and 88s. It was an incredible, incredible display of air power. Nevertheless, folks, um, thank you so much for tuning in. We had a blue victory here, so congratulations to... Oh my gosh, I can't think of their names already. Uh, to local festival in Shuko Dim. And bad, bad defeat, unfortunately, for You Shall Suffer in UK Alexander. You guys had definitely an early, a great early game. Alexander, far more than You Shall Suffer. But if you guys want to see more of this... Uh, please, hit that like button. Give me a subscribe or two. If you haven't subscribed just yet, I post five or six days a week. And I'll see you guys all soon. This is Con Ulrich signing off. Take it easy if you're...